The Deer Farming Channel is brought to you by Rafter P Construction. Stick around to learn more about Rafter P's design build process and of course, the biggest deer in the world. So one of the biggest things that uh, I discovered when I came out here was the fact that uh, this place is quiet. And what I mean by that, it is in a remote location, it seems like, when in fact it's really uh, close to the Houston area, but uh, it's quiet and it feels remote and very peaceful. Deer farming is a serious business and I think before anybody gets involved in deer farming, you need to look at it and say, it's a business, okay? But it's also a great lifestyle. And what I mean by that is families love deer farming. Families that uh, love being together, love the outdoors and love deer. It's got the entire package. It is a business, but it's also about the lifestyle. My name is Neil Potan with G&K Whitetails. We're located just outside of Madisonville, Texas. Our deer facility is roughly 22 acres with 17 deer pens. Our goal here at G&K Whitetails is to raise big framed whitetail with the look the hunters desire. All right, so this is the second set of your second crop of bucks, right? Yes, sir. Okay, we're gonna start out in the yearling pen. These are some nice looking yearlings. I mean, they, uh, you got yellow tags on them all and uh, there's some pretty ones in here for doggone sure, but one that stands out is number 15, yellow 15. Tell me about him. Yeah, he's a pretty typical we got out here out of uh, Peacemaker. Um, he's out of a gunslinger doe that goes back to Loopy's Dam. Okay, so that really came from Tejada. Yes. All that stuff goes back to Tejada. Yep. And, and pedigree sure means something. I mean, when you start talking about genetics and, and the breeding, I mean, anything that's going to go back to that Tejada stuff with Gunslinger in it, Peacemaker, it's going to be big stuff. But uh, what about number 14 right there? I mean, that's a pretty deer too. 14 is actually his womb brother. Come on. Womb brother. Okay, so when we talk about uh, uh, genetics and, and how these are these traits keep getting passed on and on, I mean, you can tell, though, okay, so 14 or 15 are womb brother. Same pedigree. Yep. Okay, yep. that's pretty doggone cool. So uh, clearly you did, man, that's nice. Clearly you lined them up right. So, uh, okay, you've got, uh, there's a blue tag buck in here. What's the deal with him? Blue tag buck's actually a high roller draft pick. Woo, baby, that's something big. Okay, high roller draft pick. Now you look at him as a yearling, eh, eh. And what a high roller draft pick means is that you were one of the lucky people to be involved in it. I, I was fortunate enough to be involved in it too. And some of these high roller draft picks grow up to be giants. I mean, real giants. So as you look at him at one, you, eh, that's nothing to look at. But let me tell you something, if you look at his pedigree, I don't know what his pedigree but it is, but I guarantee it's strong. I know that later on the show, we're gonna introduce you to a buck by the name of Black Ice. And he was a high roller draft pick that these guys wound up picking a couple of years ago, and you're not gonna believe how big he is. All right, so these guys, they're all pretty doggone gentle. I mean, you almost spend a lot of time in the pens. Yeah, our pen manager, Summer Wingo, and, and my wife, Kelly, they spend a lot of time out here treating the bucks, you know, different treats. Which and... keeps them gentle. And, and, and when they're gentle like this, you can get eyes on them, you can make good decisions as far as he's not feeling good or boy, he's right, doing good. Right. And you, can, you can really make some good decisions. The more you can get these deer to come up to you, the, the, the more you're able to see when they have certain ail ailments. Boy, they're pretty. I mean, there's a couple in here that are really outstanding, but number 14 and 15, I think that breeding did right. All right, so when we get back from the break, we're gonna show you Kelly and Summer taking care of some bottle babies, but we're gonna show you a buck that's in here that we've been kind of holding off. His name is Sundance Kid, and he's the man. Now it's time for viewer feedback. All right, here's one. Please listen to it carefully. It comes to me on Facebook Messenger by a viewer by the name of Greg. He says, I'm a deer hunter and I love watching your shows on your YouTube channel. Can you tell your audience about this new CWD susceptibility test? Okay, chronic wasting disease has been made out to be this horrible disease that is affecting deer in all these different states and provinces, okay? And it's supposed to be really, really bad, okay? And so what's happened is the North American Deer Registry has developed a genetic predictability test, which winds up allowing a deer breeder to take a look at the genetics that you have in these deer and find out which deer that we have in our captive pens that are more susceptible or less susceptible to CWD. And that's great news because what we're gonna be able to do in the deer industry, we're gonna be able to take those deer that are less susceptible to CWD and breed them to each other. And we're gonna be breeding less susceptible deer to CWD. And the reason why that's important, it couldn't be done on wild deer, but it can be done in pen deer. 
and that test is available now through the North American Deer Registry. That's a great question, and if y'all have any questions for me, head on over to Facebook and shoot me a message on Facebook Messenger, or you can shoot me an email. Deer and Wildlife Stories, we'll be right back. Hi, my name is Summer Wingo, and I'm with GNK Whitetails. I'm the pen manager out here, so I help with day-to-day -day activities in the pens. I uh, do animal health, uh, you know, darting, anything that needs to be medicated. I will help with feeding. I help bottle raise the babies, check feed, water, everything along those lines. I've been doing this for about nine years now. I started in 2013, got lots of practice, but I learned something new every day. So this afternoon we'll be bottle feeding. Um, we'll have Neil's wife, Kelly, she's out here with me every day. Um, so she's pretty much my right hand. And we'll have their daughters out here, Caitlin and Avery, to help bottle raise some babies. Um, we do this every day, you know, four times a day to start out and then it gradually tapers off as the fawns get older. We pull fawns for various reasons, you know, if the mom has three or more to lighten the load on the mama and help the babies get a little more milk. For that reason, we also pull them if mama's not taking good enough care of them or it just doesn't seem like they're right, they have some kind of problem, we'll go ahead and pull them in to put them on the bottle and, you know, give them the best chance we think we can. Okay, so Kelly, let's talk about Kelly for a minute, all right? Kelly, uh, she used to be a nurse. She yep. And now she's nursing deer. <laughs> I mean, she's taking care yeah, of deer. Yeah. Okay, so she went from people to deer. And uh, how she feel about that? She loves it. Uh, you how know, do you feel about that is more important question. I, I, I think it's fantastic. You know, this is this has turned into more of a family operation than, than I could have ever imagined. Well, you Gary. You know, my kids are involved. You, Gary, your dad, I mean, the kids, I mean, your wife, and I think, Deer farming, the way I tell people, I said, the cool thing about deer farming is the lifestyle that it gives us. It does. Okay, and the people that, uh, we wouldn't know each other if it wasn't for the white-tailed deer. And there, there, we know hundreds of people because of the white-tailed deer. And I think that Kelly and your kids are getting involved in, in deer. And I think that's wonderful because that is not the traditional model, it seems like, for, for deer farmers. Mostly it's guys and boys, little boys. but. I love seeing the fact that your little girls are out here, they're paying attention to what's going on, that's pretty cool. They're picking up on it, we love it. All right, so there he is. That's the Sundance Kid. So tell everybody pedigree, age and pedigree on him. Sundance Kid's a three-year-old. He's a gunslinger on Kid Rock, on Jesse James, on Amber. Okay, so again, we mentioned Tejada in the last segment, George Sunal Tejada. Gunslinger, that's Tejada, okay? Yep. And so the bloodline, I mean, clearly that's one of the bloodlines that you've picked to breed with and the results are are obvious. I mean, you've done done good on him, but uh, so what are your plans with him? He's going to be our, our our lead breed buck out here this year. Um, you know, he's uh, he's really put it on this year in comparison to what he did last year. Yeah. We're really pleased with with the with the frame. Yeah, look at him. I mean, he is absolutely beautiful. He looks like his dad. <laughs> I mean, Gunslinger. You know, I remember the very first time I saw Gunslinger. It's like. I'll never forget it. I mean, he was absolutely beautiful. And I look at him, I'm thinking, Gunslinger just got it done over and over again. So that pedigree is strong. So how wide do you think he is? You know, I think he'll be crowding 30 inches. Wow. So I hear that uh, you bought a buck uh, by the name of Affirmed from Jason Milligan. Tell everybody about him and why did you buy him? Well, Affirmed's pedigree is Triple X Express Opal. Uh, it's a different pedigree from, you know, most of the does that we have here, so it matches up pretty well for us. He's uh, just a monster wide frame buck that uh, we're really proud to have in our lineup. And you're going to bring him here? He'll be here, yes. yes. Okay, so by the time this show is running, Affirmed will be out here, so if you want more information about coming out here and taking a look at Affirmed or, you know, any of the bucks out here, and uh, you can talk to Neil and give him a telephone number. 832-656. 0104. Okay, right now we're uh, the third week of August, okay, and these deer are just about dried up. Yep. If you can tell by looking at their antlers, you're just starting to dry up pretty good. But uh, there's a buck in another pen. He's got some antler damage, and uh, Summer and Kelly are going to have to go take care of him, and we'll show you that right after the break. So every day when we're out in the pens, we are checking for any kind of injuries, anybody that's not feeling well, um, you know, ears down, they're coughing, their breathing is heavier than it should be. Um, and we noticed this one buck that, you know, he had a drop broken for a little bit and it was kind of dangling. Um, and now his, the tips of his antlers started to poke out from his velvet. So, you know, he was kind of laying around being a little lazier than normal. So we decided to go ahead and cut him 
to um, load him up with antibiotics, get that stress off of him, and hopefully get him in the right direction. Okay, so once we get him up to the barn, we will go ahead and we'll start an IV with some antibiotics in there so he gets antibiotics directly into his bloodstream. We will give him another antibiotic under the skin and we'll give him an anti-inflammatory uh, in the muscle. And then we will also use some bands to cut off the circulation to his antlers to reduce the blood flow when we cut him. When we have an animal down like this, we try to check everything that we can, things that we normally wouldn't be able to. So we'll check his feet for any kind of you know, lumps or anything abnormal. This also gives us a chance to put our hands on his antlers. We can measure them, measure his tine length, measure his beam length, and uh, just really know what that animal has to offer. When we start the cutting process with the saw, the bands you know, help take away the pain. He's under sedation, just like, just like a regular surgery. We try to make it quick and easy, reduce stress on the animal. Um, we do it as quick as possible. So right after we cut this deer, there'll be some exposed veins and arteries where you know some blood might be coming out. We usually try to plug them with toothpicks if the bands don't cut the blood supply completely. And those toothpicks will fall out over time. Um, they will come out completely whenever he starts to rub his antlers on the trees to strip his velvet off, just like another deer. So after we get the blood flow stopped um, and the deer cleaned up a little bit, we will actually use a liquid bandage called alu spray just to kind of coat that, keep the bacteria out, and help seal up that open wound. So now we're about ready to wake this deer up. We are going to let the entire bag of fluids run out into him, uh, make sure he gets all his meds, and then we'll take him back to the pen and wake him up, and we'll make sure he's up and rolling before we leave, and then we'll come check on him the next morning. So it's the next morning, and we went to check on the buck, and he looks good. He's up, he's eating. Um, he's got a lot of weight off of his neck now. Hopefully we got any infection under control. And uh, he's up and doing good with the rest of the deer. If you like what you saw in the video today, um, please feel free to give us a call on the numbers at the bottom of the screen. You can look us up on Facebook at GNK Whitetails, and we'd be more than happy to answer any questions you have. All right, so this is the first really group of bucks that you had. These are two-year-olds in here. and so. Y'all really haven't been farming that long, and these are nice looking deer. I mean, they're, they're some really nice two-year-olds, and that one buck that Summer and Kelly wound up cutting off last night, he seems to be doing good. Yeah, he got oh, some yeah. relief, there's no doubt. Oh uh, yeah, he's up on his feet, so he's doing good. Well, so tell me about some of these other deer out here. I mean, pedigree-wise, uh, all of them have got strong pedigrees, but tell me about that guy right there. That's Yellow 965. He's a gunslinger son on uh, Landmark's womb system. Okay. Landmark's, Landmark's freeze frame going back to uh, FedEx's dam at the bottom. Yeah, so I mean, we've, uh, we've, I mean, of course, Gunslinger, nobody knows who Gunslinger is. And Landmark, I mean, Landmark is one of my favorite here. Great, big, typical, pretty deer. That's a, that's a nice looking buck right there. You know, earlier in the show, we wound up, we, we showed you a blue tag yearling and we said he was a high roller uh, draft pick. Okay, and, uh, and the high roller draft is something that's an event that's been going on many years now. It's really helped get genetics out. To, uh, to a lot of places like GNK, like my place, okay? Because it gives us an opportunity to get in there and take a chance at getting a fantastic deer. And Neil wound up, they took a chance and they got a fantastic draft pick uh, back at the, and tell everybody, uh, you got a buck by the name of Black Ice. Tell Black everybody Ice. about Black Ice. Black Ice is Blackjack, Freeze Frame, Express, Jennifer. And uh, he's he's been really special this year. Yeah, he's, he, and he's phenomenal. When you take a look at the video of him, he's, uh, he's actually over at High Roller Whitetails right now. Currently he is. Okay, and, uh, but uh, as far as the draft pick goes, y'all are, are very fortunate. First off, anybody to participate uh, is gonna improve their genetics, but let's face it, I mean, you really got lucky with that pick because that's a fantastic pedigree and he is a fantastic looking deer. So you're gonna leave him over at High Roller then, and I'm sure you're gonna take semen to breed him over here. Correct. Okay, so, so High Roller is a partner on that deer? High Roller is a partner on okay, that deer. Okay, and so you've got another deer that we filmed earlier this year that you've got a partner on, and the deer's name is Hank. Hank. Okay, so Hank is over at P-Bar Whitetails, Jody Phillips. And I remember when I saw Hank for the first time, he stood up on the hill, and I was like, holy smokes. <laughs> Hank is something special. So tell everybody about Hank and why you partnered with Jody in order to, uh, you know, what, were you go what, was, what were you thinking there? Hank is just a really special two-year-old. I don't know that I've ever seen a two-year-old with that type of a typical frame, you know, and, and he's, he's just, the wow factor is unbelievable with this deer. And uh, he's a Whalen son, 
and the partnership on that deer is, is, is really special. We've got Jody, we've got High Roller, we've got uh, Blackjack Whitetails as well. And uh, I'm really excited to, to, to see what Hank's gonna do for this industry. He's a heck of a deer and I know everybody's talking about him for sure. So as y'all being new to the industry, and I say new less than five years really, um, tell everybody about partnerships and how important that has played in your business decisions. Partnerships just helps us market the deer and, and, and get the get the name out there uh, to more people. You know, if you partner with the right folks, the marketing strategies of multiple, you know, deer breeders is going to catapult, you know, these these bucks to, to a new level. I want to say this: in order to have a breeder buck today, he's got to have be something incredibly special. Mm -hmm. and we've talked about that off camera, and I talk about it with every breeder. There's some beautiful bucks that you've got in your two-year-olds. I mean, there's some real pretty ones, but they're not going to make the elite breeder program for the industry. Uh, and the reason why is they may not have the look or whatever, but let me tell you something. Every single elite buck, every single one, whether you're talking about Black Ice, you're talking about Hank, or you're talking about, you know, Sundance Kid, it doesn't matter. Every one of them has to have the paper, okay? You've got to have the paper before anything else, okay? And once you have the paper, you got to have the look, okay? And once you have the look, that's not enough. You need to have the right marketing behind that deer and partnerships really help you with the right marketing to increase that value and protect the deer. All right, question for you. Tell everybody how important the North American Deer Registry is to you for making decisions for breeding. Without the, the North American Deer Registry, you know, there wouldn't be any way of keeping track of, of, of what's out there. Um, you know, Uniqueness is a is a is a big factor in this business, you know. And if you can create something that is unique, that's one of the stars that needs to align in order for the industry to accept them. And, and so, the North American Deer Registry is the, the the AKC Kennel Club for the deer industry. Correct. With several hundred, more than several hundred thousand deer in the registry now, we have the ability to take a look at not only what what deer were bred to whom and how many offspring but we know now who did the breeding. And so we're watching what our competition is doing, we're watching what the deer are doing, and we're able to gauge things. But the most exciting thing about the North American Deer Registry now is our chronic wasting disease susceptibility test. And what this is, it is an opportunity for us to know as breeders, we're not just breeding for antlers anymore. We're breeding more focused now towards chronic wasting disease and breeding chronic wasting disease out of our deer, period. And the cool thing about that, as you well know, you couldn't do that with wild deer, okay? Yeah. We're gonna be able to breed CWD resistant deer and we're gonna do it right here in deer pens. Thanks to the North American Deer Registry. All right, well, I'll tell you what, I've had a fantastic time. This is my first opportunity to come out here and I look at the place and I think, uh, at first I thought the place was overbuilt. I thought, what in the world are y'all doing? Okay, you've got pens, you got more pens without deer in it than pens with deer in it. But I found out how come. And I think y'all are extremely bullish on the market, and I'm bullish on the market. I think the future of the deer industry, in spite of the current regulation issues and stuff, I think the future is extremely bright, and I commend y'all for it. Thanks, and, and thanks for having us out, and thanks for y'all watching. If you've got any questions or comments about the show and you're watching online, you know what to do. Go ahead and post them below. If you're not watching online, head on over to YouTube. Look at the Deer Farming channel where all of our programs are available 24-7. you want to get a hold of G&K Whitetails, give them a phone number. 832 Six five six zero one zero four. They're just outside of Madisonville, Texas. They'd love to hear from you. My name is Keith Warren, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for having us out, man. Thank you for coming. Appreciate it. Okay, so you've got property, and you're wanting to build. Maybe a barn dominium, maybe deer facilities, or maybe a badass lodge. Well, you've got to check out Rafter P Construction. Rafter P Construction is the leading design-build contractor across the state of Texas. Specializing in quality farm and ranch design-build projects, Rafter P Construction encourages their customers to be very hands-on, incorporating your input into every aspect of your project with their in-house design teams. The goal of Rafter P Construction is to be your builder for life. Rafter P Construction, they'll be with you every step of the way to build your dream project. All the while, keeping quality and customer satisfaction at the forefront.